my, 62 male, wife, 62 female, divorced me 12 years ago after 28 years of marriage and two wonderful children. I later learned she cheated on the way out. Now ex-wife wants us to be friends, and maybe date again. Need advice about how to proceed and what concerns I should anticipate after 12 years? I was destroyed 12 years ago but doing well now and love my single life. A friend recommended I post my story here so others might gain some perspective on what worked for me and what didn't. And how I found out and survived. And to gain some advice from this community. This is 12 years after all the drama. I know the tone and attitude would have been far different had I written this back at the time. The person who coined the term emotional roller coaster got it exactly right. And you can't get off. But the ride does get smoother. Life goes on. We had a near perfect marriage. We met in college and married soon after graduation. That was 40 years ago. I was a jock and she was a beauty and very smart. We did have some tight financial times early on and had to make some sacrifices. But we were both of the same mind on spending and saving. We socialized together and did hobbies together and did everything as a couple. We stood by each other through family tragedies and struggles with each of our aging parents and their eventual passing. And even a couple of our own health scares. She survived cancer and I had heart issues we're both fine now. Like most married couples we were true partners in every way. A team. We moved three times into progressively nicer homes as the kids grew up and our incomes increased same school district. We even bought a lake house two hours away when our kids were tweeners and made many cherished memories there over the years. With all of that, plus stashing away funds for the kids' college, we were still able to become completely debt-free the last several years of our marriage. A long-time goal and we celebrated with a night out on the town. Limousine and all. Like rich people. It was great fun but even for that night we had a budget and stuck to it. Our intimate time was good even after having kids. Less frequent as we aged but still good. After so many years you just sense when your partner is in the mood. And when not. We went on date nights at least once a month after the kids were beyond the toddler stage and went on vacations and camping trips and many other activities as they got older. We were always completely involved and busy. When the kids were old enough to stay home alone we joined a bowling league and bowled once a week with good friends for many years. We were so busy with our own increasingly demanding jobs and the kids' activities that I hired a maid service to clean and do laundry a couple of times per week. My wife was against it at first but got on board pretty quickly. She was worried that the kids would get entitled and lazy but we made sure they still made their beds, cleaned their rooms, put away their washed clothes, and did all of their normal chores like trash and yard work. I knew my wife's love language was words of affirmation and acts of service. My language was physical touch and quality time. We never really argued or shouted at each other. It's not in our nature. We were always on the same page with big decisions but sometimes disagreed on little stuff. Usually I caved to keep harmony. But when I stood firm she would give me the silent treatment for a few hours or a day. But that's about it. I know in my heart we are happy and I know she would have agreed. Our kids are a son and a daughter. Two years apart. They are the joy of our lives and are both grown and starting their own families now. Our son was an accomplished athlete. Just like me. And our daughter was a cheerleader and in the choir and belonged to several school clubs. Our kids didn't give us too much trouble since my son's coaches and I kept him on the straight and narrow for sports and our daughter has always been well grounded and mature for her age. She was always a daddy's girl except for a year or so as an early teenager when she detested me. I couldn't do anything right. But she grew out of that stage and we became good again. Funny thing is, towards the end of her high school years the wife and daughter were sometimes at odds and not speaking. I guess it's a mother-daughter thing. But after our daughter moved out and on her own they became very close and talk or text every day. All this to say we had a great marriage, great kids, and a fulfilling life for 28 years. That's a long time. We told each other we loved the other and did the I love you more shtick. On our 25th anniversary we renewed our vows, at her suggestion. And I agreed if we also went on the honeymoon we couldn't afford as newlyweds. We invited the kids but they said no. It was our time. We had it all. She was still attractive and I told her so. And I was too because she told me so. A little over 12 years ago. After our kids were gone on their own. My wife fell into a mindset of is that all there is like the Peggy Lee song. I had just turned 50 and she was 49. Soon to be 50. I could sense she was a little troubled and I even walked in on her quietly crying a couple of times. We had some long conversations over the next several weeks and she said she loved me in our life but felt like she needed something more. Also that it was her. Not me. And I had done nothing wrong. I was confused and worried. 
I thought maybe it was just empty nest or midlife crisis. Or even boredom. I will fix this. I tried everything from reading relationship books. To being more attentive and complimentary. To doing things I knew pleased her. Tried new activities that would add some excitement to her life. I also tried to get home earlier. Worked out more. Shaved twice a day and got my hair trimmed every week to always look my best for her. Our intimate time actually increased for a little while as I spiced things up. Trouble was. It wasn't working. In fact all of my extra efforts and attention ended up having the opposite effect. I could feel she was less interested in me. Not more. How could that be? She eventually declared she needed independence and space and wanted us to divorce. I argued for a temporary separation but she seemed set on the divorce route. I was completely shocked and so were the kids. Why? What changed? We stopped communicating as much after that. I never asked if she still loved me because I feared the answer. I did ask a few times if there was someone else and she would say something like that's not what this is about. So I assumed the answer was no. I didn't suspect anything because she had always been completely open with her computer and phone and never stayed out late with friends so I dismissed that thought. Besides. She would never do that. She did have to work late sometimes and travel to call on her client accounts a little more. But we both had high level positions by then and I assumed that was expected. I scheduled a coffee with one of her closest girlfriends to ask about my wife's change in attitude and she seemed surprised too. Menopause? Hormones? Her friend promised to find out and let me know. My marriage was falling apart. During the divorce process I lost my appetite and had trouble sleeping. I cried sometimes when alone very rare for me. Men don't cry and I would have moved mountains to keep her. Just show me the mountain. I thought I could fix anything if I tried hard enough. But this time I didn't know what to fix. I was losing her and felt helpless to stop it. Completely out of my hands. I remember laying flat on the floor and just staring up at the ceiling for hours in a kind of trance. My beloved dog Max would lay his big head on my chest and just breathe with me. Dogs really do sense things. My work was suffering so I took a one month sabbatical. Big mistake because staying home and being alone during the day made things worse. My wife would come home from work and I had done the yard work. Cleaned the house. Done laundry. Done the shopping. Made dinner. Arranged fresh flowers on the counter and dressed casual but nice. All for her. I hadn't yet learned my lesson and couldn't help it. It's amazing how trying to attract a female can motivate and focus a male so completely. Must be in our DNA. Sadly she would just run up to shower and come back down in her least flattering flannel bedclothes to eat. Sometimes she would acknowledge my efforts. Sometimes not. She was not mean or spiteful. Just dispassionate. I'd ask about her day and she would reply with a few sentences and maybe a few comments about the kids and that would be our conversation for the day. We used to talk about everything in detail all through dinner and after. Now she spent most evenings in her home office until bedtime. In bed she did allow me to cuddle up behind her son but the intimate time stopped completely. I tried to ask her in different ways what had happened to us and she would just shrug as if to say I don't know. Sometimes with a tear. She had to know how much she was hurting me but just wouldn't talk about it. We divorced. The pain was intense as you guys know. I had failed. I wasn't enough for her even when trying my best. I have such empathy for anyone losing a long-term partner. It negates the reason you existed all those years. Like all your time with her was nothing. Erased. We both stayed amicable during the divorce process and our lawyer helped us split assets pretty much 50-50 with her agreeing to most decisions in my favor. Money was not an issue. Each of us kept our pensions and ESOP plans and stock options. She did sob a little when we signed the final papers in the lawyer's office. When he officially filed we quickly sold both the big house and the lake house. She wasn't interested in them anymore and I was too heartbroken to want either of them without her or the kids there. She bought a nice condo closer to her work and I helped her find it and even rented a truck and helped move her in. She took most of the furniture and kitchen stuff. That was her thing. And I took all the tools and equipment and electronics and grills. That was my thing. I'm the homeowner type and bought a smaller house on a wooded acreage just outside of town where my dog could run outdoors. I love that dog. He comforted me through those bad times and I still have his ashes on my mantle and frequently thank him with a nod. I thank my human friends too both guys and gals, for their support during some dark days. They checked up on me and made sure I didn't go through this alone. So did my kids. Also, my newly purchased house and property needed some maintenance and I enjoyed working on it as a distraction and my buddies and son helped me on many evenings and weekends. My labor cost was keeping the fridge stocked with beers. 
Also the wife of a friend and a female co-worker together helped me pick out furniture and decorate and get all the essentials. And I made sure they had bottles of high-end wine. They were all the best. I was able to extend my sabbatical two additional months. I still felt empty and hopeless and without purpose and needed to get my head straight. The kids took the divorce pretty hard. We didn't really talk about it much at the time other than them making sure I was okay. They both seemed to put the blame all on their mother. My son refused to help move his mom into her new condo. Our daughter refused to speak to her for several months and was cold to her for a few years. I think that hurt my ex-wife the most as they had previously communicated nearly every day. I figured this was natural because it was their mother who wanted the divorce. Not me. And they could see my pain. For several months after the divorce the ex and I remained friends of sorts and we still exchanged texts. I set up her home entertainment and security systems and she also invited me over for dinner a couple of times and I jumped at each offer. But I was walking on eggshells. What a fool I was after all the pain she caused. Six months after the divorce our smart. Beautiful daughter was scheduled to marry her longtime fianc. A good guy with a bright future and they had our enthusiastic blessing. This had been planned well before the divorce. Our daughter had her bachelorette party in a local hotel conference room so everyone could get rooms and relax at the party without driving home. Believe it or not, I was invited as well as some of her cousins and aunts and uncles along with her friends including some male friends. How many dads get invited to their daughter's bachelorette party? It was great and everyone had a ball. There was a DJ and dancing and some jokes but nothing weird like male strippers or anything like that. Our daughter didn't invite her mother which really upset her. Big time. X told me how disappointed and hurt she was for not being invited and even called me a couple of times that night to see how things were going. I wasn't over my ex yet, but I was better. The pain was no longer constant and I wanted her to find whatever she was missing in her life. I realize now that I was still hopeful she would come back to me after she found it. And I'll admit that at that point, I would have welcomed her back in a heartbeat. At the end of the party after the guests had all gone to their rooms or the hotel bar, my daughter sat on the couch next to me, in front of the fireplace, with her head on my shoulder, and we sipped good scotch and recounted many happy times into the wee hours. We laughed and cried. It was perfect and I didn't want the night to end. Toward the end we were getting pretty mushy and my daughter finally brought up the divorce. We hadn't discussed it much before other than logistics. Never the emotional stuff. Paraphrasing here. In a haze I asked my daughter, as a woman, what it was like to live with me and that I knew I wasn't perfect. I knew this was a high-risk question but after the divorce I just had to ask. She said that I could sometimes be intense and had high expectations. They all worried about disappointing me. With a giggle she said that she and her brother, and even mom, used to refer to me affectionately as sergeant dad or the sergeant, but they knew I would always be there for them. I told her that I know I wasn't the most emotionally open guy, but I cared even if I didn't show it enough. She knew, and replied that she could only hope that her new husband would be as good a husband and father as I am, and she just wished I could find someone who makes me really happy and not cheat like mom. Wait. What? She saw the look on my face and said OMG. You don't know. That's why you guys divorced. Mom never told you? My daughter knew that my wife cheated with another man just before we divorced and thought they were still seeing each other. I was flabbergasted. I asked her why she didn't tell me before and she said that she assumed I already knew more than she did and that's why I had divorced mom. Everyone did. In tears she told me it was a really bad time and she purposely avoided the whole subject with me other than making sure I was okay. I told her that I didn't divorce her mom. Her mom divorced me. I hugged her and thanked her for being with me and that she would always be my little girl. I asked her when and how long and she didn't know for sure but assumed it started a month or so before her mom and I first discussed divorce. I asked if her brother knew and she said yes. They talked about it a lot. In fact, He's the one who did social media research and suspected there might be someone else. Kids are so perceptive. That's why my kids were so cold to their mother and so sympathetic to me. My perception of my ex-wife changed forever that night. I had been as friendly as I could although the divorce process and after. But now I didn't know how to act. My mind was racing and I didn't sleep much that night. I never suspected anything. But thinking back she had been getting her hair and nails done more often. And shaving her legs and things more and buying nicer clothes, and taking longer picking out just the right outfit some mornings, and spending more time on eye makeup she didn't wear much makeup. At the time I just assumed it was her trying to keep up with the younger women at her job. She was about to turn 50 and I know that bothered her. Also, she was working longer hours and the occasional Saturday and sometimes traveled to visit clients. 
but she had many responsibilities at work and I just figured that was necessary. Truth was, she wasn't looking for something more in her life. She had already found it. And it was another man. As horrible as her rejection was. This betrayal was much worse. My world fell apart again. The next morning my daughter brought her laptop to the lobby and showed me the o.m.zfb page and other sites. Turns out this guy is an executive for a client of my ex's company. One of her larger accounts. My daughter admitted that he's not bad looking but not nearly as good as you dad. Mom traded down. Hard to hear talk like that from your daughter. He was a widower with a grown daughter himself. There were no pictures that showed my ex and her name wasn't specifically mentioned. But his postings implied that he was infatuated with a recent divorcee that sounded just like my ex-wife. He knew her likes and dislikes and wished her a happy 50th birthday on my ex-wife's B-Day. My daughter said that mom had deleted her own Facebook and Instagram account sometime during the divorce so nothing to see from her side anymore. I immediately ignored ghosted? My ex-wife. No response to texts and didn't answer calls or emails. Even from her friends. The wife's best friend that promised to find out more never did get back to me so she either already knew at the time. Or later. And was protecting ex's secret. My ex and I both attended our daughter's wedding the next weekend. During the week I had gone from shock and numb to anger. Also my daughter announced there would be no rehearsal or rehearsal dinner nor would there be a receiving line after the ceremony. I think she did this for me. In any case the wedding was my first contact with the ex after learning the truth. Due to all the increased stress and workouts I had lost over 20 pounds and knew I looked good in my tailored tux as I proudly walked my daughter down the aisle. After I gave the bride away and turned to sit next to my ex in our reserved seats up front. I saw she looked absolutely stunning in a tight black dress and heels and her hair all put up. Red lipstick and dark hose. Everything she knew I liked. But I didn't say a word to her. I was so angry that she had deceived me and all I could see was the image of her with the OM. She tried to hold my hand during the vows but I gently pulled away. I also shifted slightly so our thighs and shoulders didn't touch. She had tears at the end of the ceremony but I don't know why or what was in her head. When we left to go take the wedding photos I got up and left her sitting there. The ushers had to escort her out because I didn't. I know. A dick thing to do but it felt right at the moment. During the picture session not a word to her. Although she did try to engage me a couple of times. I joked with my daughter and everyone else. Just not with her. What did she expect? I smiled for my daughter's sake but couldn't wait to get to the reception area where I could get a strong drink and away from my ex. Fortunately my daughter had pre-arranged the seating and I was assigned next to her but she had my ex seated a few chairs down. Another blow to her. Apparently the ex didn't know that I knew about the OM. Otherwise how could she expect to still be friends? My respect and trust and desire for my ex was gone. Ruined. No matter how beautiful she was. I gave my glowing father of the bride toast but didn't reference my ex at all. As if she didn't have any role in raising our daughter. Again. A dick move. I know. When we did the father-bride dance I didn't look in my ex's direction but I'm told she was crying. Both sets of parents were supposed to dance next. But we didn't. I successfully avoided my ex for the remainder of the evening and enjoyed myself with my daughter. Son. New son-in-law and relatives. I didn't see my ex leave so I don't know how long she stayed. But the few times I did see her she looked sad. Not like someone celebrating her daughter's marriage. My company's policy required decision makers corporate officers to attend at least one counseling session after a traumatic life event. Like a death in the family. Divorce. Childbirth even for the father. Etc. I was already several months past due and HR was bugging me weekly so I scheduled the mandatory session just to get the box checked off. I ended up going three more times. Never thought I would ever go for IC. But I'll admit he helped. Not that touchy-feely psychobabble stuff I had imagined. He couldn't help me understand why or what my ex did. And didn't try. But how I could react to it in a healthy way. Part of which was to continue no contact until I was in a better state of mind. When I was ready to talk to her was my choice. Not hers. Another was to decide if I wanted to know details and timing about the ex-wife's affair activities and her feelings. Or not. My choice. Next was to determine if ex-wife and I could ever be friends again. My choice. Another was to determine if reconciliation could ever be possible someday. And what things would I require from ex-wife to consider it. My choice. Each decision. And my reasons. Had to be written down and brought to the next session. Looking back I think much of this was the counselor trying to put some decisions and control back into my hands. And it worked for my personality. 
There were also discussions along the way about my feelings and emotions and anger but those were personal so I won't get into that. In the last session we discussed how to live alone and what would make me happy and fulfilled in the future. My purpose had always been head of household and husband and father. I needed a new purpose and goals. Now I wish I would have suggested. Or demanded. That ex-wife and I attend MC back when all this started. Maybe it could have helped. At least for me. Apparently my continued no contact 180? Took a toll on my ex. In the months after the daughter's wedding she left me several long voice messages. Some tearful. I didn't listen to all of them and never responded but. Paraphrasing again. She was sorry about not telling me about the OM. And the way I found out. And desperately wanted us to talk about things and at least be friends again. In a later message she said she made a huge mistake and is so sorry for hurting me and really misses me in our life. Can we talk? On one of the last messages she sounded a little tipsy and rambled that she knows how much she hurt me. And she was wrong. And she lost the only man she's ever loved. And her family and most of her friends. And she knows I hate her but she will always love only me. And will always be my girl. And would give anything to put things back the way they were. Again. What did she expect from me? That ship had sailed. I didn't want to talk about things or care to know about the OM or any details. Knowing that she chose him and threw me away after 28 years when I was suffering and trying so hard. Was enough. That was 12 years ago. It doesn't hurt anymore. Like my counselor predicted. I had to learn how to live alone and redefine my purpose. Our friends who knew about the OM are no longer my friends. I made my house into my dream palace. Added a third bay on the garage for my new Harley Softail with deuce seat. And an ATV. I rode before I met her but my ex never let me even consider a motorcycle after our first child. I put all the newest conveniences in my kitchen and living spaces. And turned the basement into my man cave with a killer sound system. Multi-screen video facilities. Wet bar and a quality gym. After a long day I go down there and work out interval training then sit in my recliner in the dark with my sound system turned up high playing classical music. Or old rock and chill out X always frowned on me playing my music loud. Also, my house is now the place where all the guys come on game days NFL. We watch several games simultaneously. Like in a sports bar. I also set up a playroom with a TV and small furniture and animals painted on the walls and a toy box full of toys for my little grandkids. Love those grandkids and my son and daughter bring them to visit regularly. We had a pumpkin carving party here just last week and it was loads of fun. I'm thinking of getting another dog to play with the grandkids. And me. I installed a remote wood burning furnace with heat exchanger and heat my home mostly from my own timber now. Works great and helps keep me off the couch and active in the colder months. I became obsessed with cooking and recipes and learned which dishes were quickest, easiest, and made the best leftovers. I came to enjoy cooking and eventually branched out into more complex meals for my lady friends. They love it. And I enjoy doing it for them. I also love single life from the romance side. My buddy's spouses and girlfriends tried setting me up with other women early on but I resisted. They are such matchmakers. I finally gave in after almost two years for a double date. With my kids strong urging. I was scared but have grown from those first timid. Awkward double dates to now having ongoing relationships with several amazing women. Things are different dating in your 50s and early 60s nowadays rather than when I was a young man. There are many smart attractive unattached women. My age and younger. That crave attention from a relatively healthy man. You don't have to be a superstar. You just have to be respectful. Attentive. Confident. And most of all fun. I'm always completely honest with them that I am not looking for a wife or even an exclusive relationship. Did that for 28 years and loved it. But don't want it again. I'm cautious and very selective. I won't be with a married woman nor will I be with a woman for a hookup. I have to really like her and have fun and enjoy her company and also sense she feels the same for me. Getting into her bed is not the goal like it was when I was young and stupid. I take them to concerts, ball games, camping, backyard cookouts, dinner theaters and other things before getting close. If it even happens. It's not a requirement. It took me a while to get used to non-exclusive thinking and I would get jealous and possessive if I saw one of them out with someone else or group. It was hard to break the exclusive mindset and remain free. I finally realized that you can't expect to control a partner any more than they can control you. That's part of the deal. And fair. I like it because I know she is with me because she wants to be with me at that moment. Not just because we are in some kind of relationship where it's expected of her. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a playboy. 
I never pressure or make it an expectation of spending time together. It's kind of refreshing for both them and me. Takes the pressure off. Some ladies wish to be pursued and seduced. That's not me. I have lady friends that I will never be intimate with. And that's okay. I enjoy my time with them all the same. I've been a private pilot for many years and fly my own small plane experimental, amateur built but my wife never enjoyed flying. Most of the ladies absolutely love it and I have invited each individually to accompany me to fly-ins and day trips. Heard of the 100 hamburger? They also enjoy breakfast or lunch outings on my Harley. Each of these special women have their own passions and I have climbed Mount Baker train for months. Took scuba training and got my potty open water dive certificate. And skydive tandem with her instructor as she jumped and took videos. Also went to the opera and it wasn't that bad. Who knew? One even took me to some city parks looking for wedding parties. When we found one we would mingle with the guests and eat their food. And drink their booze. And everybody just assumed we must be with the other party. Bride or groom. It wasn't a cheap out thing as we would always throw in a hundred bucks when we saw a collection jar or money tree. These are just highlights and more often than not I'm home alone. Or occasionally cuddling on the couch with one of them watching Netflix or grooving to her favorite music. Point is. These women push me to do things I would never have done on my own. I still struggle sometimes wanting these women to myself. Especially the wedding crasher gal. She's the whole package. But I can't allow myself to think that way. Just before COVID I went on a 7-day cruise with 3 attractive women. I had only dated one of them before and during the trip but all 3 were fun and flirty and we laughed and had the best time. We went on daily excursions then danced and partied on the ship every night. This is me at over 60 years old. One of the best vacations of my life. At the end of the cruise a representative approached me and asked if I would like to go on future cruises at some unbelievable discounts. Seems they need more older single men to dance and interact with all the single ladies and widows. Wow. What would that make me? Gigolo? Unfortunately my ex may not be as blessed as I am. I'm told her relationship with the OM lasted about 3 years. I didn't know the details or if they ever actually lived together. Also I didn't know if she dated or saw anyone else. Not my business. I know my daughter and my ex have become close again after her relationship with the OM ended. To appease my kids. I did start responding to my ex's texts and emails around 5 years ago but just to share info and pics about the grandkids. Recently my ex emails that she wants to sit down and talk with me when I'm ready about the divorce and the affair and answer any questions. But I just don't have any desire to know any of that. I see no upside so I just ignore those emails. We saw each other at weddings and funerals and births and exchanged simple greetings. The last time we actually talked much was at our newest grandson's christening. She was still attractive but older aren't we all. She always had natural beauty and didn't wear much makeup. Now she does. I'm in my best shape in years but she looked very thin. She told me that it was not fair that I got better with age implying she didn't. We sat and talked mostly about the grandkids and how they are growing up so fast. We also laughed about many fond memories of us and our kids growing up for over two hours. I really enjoyed that and it made me remember why I fell for her in the first place. Her personality and energy and humor. I'll admit, I got those butterflies like when we were dating. She always continued to send me birthday and anniversary and Christmas and Valentine's cards and the occasional fruit basket. And sometimes sends me tickets to some cool events because her career is organizing events at large and medium venues. I don't know how she knows so much about my life. But she seems too. My kids don't know much about my social life. That's private. I don't use social media. Never have. So my private life is not out there for all to see. I have never introduced any of my lady friends to my kids but they do sometimes see pictures of our activities together. But they say that mom has mentioned my more exciting adventures. My kids tell me she always asks if I ever ask about her. My daughter does comment on how happy and easy going I am these days. I think that's because I retired last year and the pressures of the job and corporate politics are gone forever. Very liberating and does wonders for your day-to-day -day attitude. These are truly golden years. How long will it last? Who knows? I still sometimes grieve the loss of my marriage. Triggered by an old picture or a place or a song. My ex and I have recently agreed that she will be there for me when I get old and need assistance and I promise to be there for her and be her advocate when she needs it her family has a history of stroke. She brought it up and is serious about it. So am I. We have signed HIPAA and medical directive forms for each other. She will always be the mother of my children and the grandmother of my grandchildren. Over the past few months she has invited me to dinner at her condo on an evening of my choosing. Or if I prefer. Out on a date instead. My choice. 
Her tab. My daughter has also mentioned this more than once in the past months. And let's slip that mom is not seeing anyone. And hasn't for years. And I'm the only one she pines for. Will I take my ex out on a date or visit her for dinner? Maybe. Not sure. Need to think about that more. I'm intrigued but cautious. Are they ganging up on me? My daughter knows better than to ambush me with her mother but I 100% trust my daughter would never allow me to be hurt again. So what is their end game? I am divorced but will not be alone in my old age either way. I loved my married life and wife. And now I love my single life. Life goes on. TLDR. My wife 62 female divorced me 62 male 12 years ago after 28 years of marriage and raising two wonderful children. Six months after the divorce I was still not over her then learned from my daughter at her bachelorette party that my ex-wife cheated just before the divorce and was still seeing the OM. My opinion of my ex changed and I immediately went NC with her and after a couple of years leveled up and am dating several ladies and having cool adventures as a single man. It didn't work out as well for ex-wife. And now she wants us to talk and date again after being divorced for 12 years. Need advice about how to proceed and what issues I should anticipate after 12 years? I will post my responses to the very thoughtful comments in another post. This one is already really long. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy my video please subscribe and leave like.